Right, so my topic today is about black history. As some of you might gather, the month of October in the United Kingdom is Black History Month. We celebrate black history every October here in the United Kingdom. But first and foremost, I just want to look at the, the term black. The, 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 the dictionary definition of the term black is of the very darkest color owing to the absence of complete absorption of light. In other words, it's the opposite of white. The term the new black is a phrase. When some people say that something is the new black, they are simply saying that it is suddenly fashionable or popular. That's just all that is. M many of you will be familiar with the film. In America, um, orange is the new black. And also in the Bible, the color black symbolizes suffering and death in the Bible. For instance, in Job 30, verse 28, Job said, I go about mourning, but not in the sun. That's just saying he's going through a, a dark time. So black is just simply saying that the time is, you know, it's his darkest hour. And his life is in turmoil, so to speak. Black is the darkest color, the absence of any visible light. That was used in ancient Egypt and Greece as a color of the underworld. In the Roman Empire, it became the color of mourning. And over the centuries, it was frequently associated with death, evil, witches, and magic. You hear about black death, black magic, black panther, black, you know. And then we heard about the black death, which was the deadliest pandemic recorded in human history. It resulted in the deaths of up to 2 million people in Eurasia, North Africa, peaking in Europe from in the early 14th century, from 1347 to 1351. This plague was caused by bacteria. And basically all that is, I'm just looking at my notes, the Black Death was the deadliest pandemic and it was a anaerobic orgasm that can affect humans via the oriental rat flea, it's also called the tropical rat flea, is a parasite of rodents, rodents like rats or, you know, anything like mongoose or those kind of creatures this occurs when a flea that has fed on an infected rodent bite a human so that's where that and the outbreak of the black death at that time just like how we've got the coronavirus now and rumor has it that it started out in the in the chinese market because of a dead animal but much remains to be seen that is just um one of the theories you understand i'm gonna just gonna refer to my notes here because cause we are in black history month i'm just going to give you a brief definition of what sources are found the source in on wikipedia black history month is an annual observance originating in the usa it is also known as african-american history month black history began as a way of remembering important people and events in the history of the american diaspora and all this is, it consists of a worldwide collection of communities descended from native sub-Saharan African and people from sub-Saharan, um, uh, in, predominantly in the Americas. Now, black history is usually celebrated in February in the USA and Canada, while in Ireland and the Netherlands and here in the UK, it's, as I said, it's celebrated. We observe that month in October. Now, this Black History Month celebration is a time for remembrance and reflection as the country is reminded of the discrimination that African Americans endured over the centuries and the continuous struggles against the remnants of slavery, segregation, and racial. It's just a legacy of um, corruption and dis discrimination. That's all that is. But... What I'm going to, I'm going to critically examine and explore and 
analyze the unique experience of these people. Two, there are not two, three individuals that I'm going to focus on during this discussion. And that person is Louise Bennett, our Jamaican cultural icon. She's basically, she won an MBE for her on or notable performances in folklore mentoring and stuff like that and the next person i'm going to look at is angela davis an activist in in the united states i'll tell you about them briefly and the former president of the united states abram lincoln i'm just going to explain to you about the the, the role they play during the during you know black history period and what occurred from that let me just have a look here so basically black history what is it black history is the precursor to to what was created in 1926 in the u.s when an historian called carter g woodson and the association for the study of negro life and history announced the second week of february to be the negro history week now, during 1975, I'm going to talk about President Ford. He issued a message on the observance of Black History Week, urging all Americans to recognize the importance made by the nation's life and culture to, by Black citizens. And few of these people that I'm going to focus on, like I said, is Louise Bennett, Abraham Lincoln, and Angela Davis. So... I've made some notes, but I think I'm going to cut it short and just feature these individuals. But before I do that, we hear about black country. And usually I use it in the black country. I didn't understand why it was called black country. So apparently the black country is an area of the West Midlands, West Birmingham, Referring to the four metropolitan um, boroughs, Dudley, Sandwell, Walsall, and Wolverhampton. Now, the black country gained its name in the early 19th century due to the smoke from the many thousands of iron working foundries. It was the heavy polluting industry that gave the, the, those regions its name. Now, during the Industrial Revolution, the black country became one of the most industrialized parts of the UK with coal mines, coking, iron foundries, glass factories, brick, wall, and steel mills producing a high level of pollution. So that's why it's called the black country. Now, this process began in Britain in the 18th century and from there spread to other parts of the world. This began in the early 18th century, like I said, and during that period, they had innovation, industrialization, where Britain was beginning to to erect um, financial institutions, such as the banks, central bank, and a finance in order to finance the factories. Now, the profits that Britain gained were largely due to the booming of cotton and trade industries allowed investors to support the construction and those factories. Yeah. All right. Like I said, I'm going to talk about Louise Bennett. Who was Louise Bennett? Now, Louise Bennett was the original cultural revolutionary of Jamaica. In other words, she was a pioneer for our Jamaican culture. Louise Bennett was born in September 1919. She was born down North Street in Kingston, Jamaica. And she was the only child of Augustus Cornelius Bennett, her dad. And uh, he was the owner of a bakery in Spanish Town, and her mom, Karen Robinson, was a dressmaker. Now, after the death of her father in 1926, she was only seven at the time. She was primarily raised by, by her mother. Now, she was known for Jamaica folklore, poetry, radio, and television personality. I remember in the younger days when we used to watch Ringding with Miss Lou, and we used to have a laugh on a Saturday. And stuff like that. Well, in 1960, she won an MBE, which is the British Empire Award, for all her efforts and all her poetry, all her folklore, 
all her mentoring skills. She wrote and performed poems in Jamaica Patwa or Creole, and she worked to preserve the practice of presenting poetry and folk songs and stories in Patwa. And this established the validity of local languages for literary expressions. Her contribution to Jamaica literature and way of life cannot be measured. In the face of resistance to her early work, she excelled and she upbeated that tempo, you, you know, Calypso, the, the upbeat, the tempo, you know, like, and, you know, that's what we call folklore. So in 1945, in her early 20s, she won a scholarship to drama school in Britain. And it was after that that she um she actually achieved her MBE award. And that was very good. Very good as a Jamaican to come to England and, and, and do so well and to attain such an honor. Now... During that time, Jamaica was really re-establishing itself after being um, declared independence from Britain. Now, Louis Bennett, her writing was especially notable for use of the rich, colorful patois being shown by some traditional literary groups. They, you know, she always argued for the recognition of Jamaica as a full language, yet she wasn't given full respect as a writer and poet by Ed, by the leading writers of that day. They did not recognize her as a writer. She played a huge role in reintroducing Jamaicans to the folklore and oral traditions, though there was always a sense that this was vulgar. That's what people say, oh, that's Patois is a vulgar language. But I will tell you more about the Patois language in another series. They, so in other words, Louise Bennett's work wasn't acceptable in literary research circles but nevertheless she wrote lots of books and she performed and became well known to radio and television audiences now miss lou miss louise bennett appreciated the local the localized accent yes the patois proud of her accent back in her school days her deputy headmaster was trying to make a point about accent and dialect and he turned to her and suddenly she was held up singled out as an example of someone making no effort to speak properly what he called the queen's english she was dumbfounded gobsmacked by this she hadn't considered that the way she spoke made a difference to man or peace <laughs> in other words she loved our patois Yes, yeah, so that was all about Louis Bennett. So now I'm going to tell you briefly now about um, where's Abraham Lincoln. So like I said, the origins of Black History Month began in the year 1915, half a century after the 13th Amendment abolished slavery in the USA. That's what that's how Black History Month came about. So why I've chosen. Abraham Lincoln today, he was born in Kentucky, USA in 1809, and his family moved to southern India. He, his formal schooling was limited to three brief, brief period in local schools as he had to work constantly to support his family. Now, in 1830, his family moved to southern Illinois, and he obtained a job working on a river flat boat all in freight down the Mississippi River to New Orleans. Now, after settling in the towns of New Salem, Illinois, where he worked as a shopkeeper and a postmaster, he became involved in local politics as a supporter of the Wing Party, winning the election to the Illinois State Legislative in 1834. Because he opposed the spread of slavery, he was against the oppression of black people. He didn't Apparently, that's what history tells us, that he was against the oppression of black people. Right? Now, Abraham Lincoln was an American statesman and a lawyer who served in the 16th 
president of the USA from 1861 to 1865, about right about the time that they said slavery was abolished. And he led the nation through the American Civil War and the constitutional um, and political crisis. Now, following emancipation, blacks were blacks, black people. Remember def the definition of black as being the lighter shade of white? Blacks were theoretically equal before the law, including um, suffrage for black women from 1920. They still they had no voting rights. They didn't have any voting rights prior to um, Abraham Lincoln coming along. So most black men and women were effectively barred from voting until the passage of the Voting Right Act of 1965. So throughout that era, nobody could vote. So we, we born and live in a privileged time. Now, having campaigned so unsuccessfully for the seat in the early 19th century, Abraham Lincoln delivered his, his famous speech, House Divided, and quoted from the Gospels to illustrate his belief. That means he was a, a, a God-fearing person as well. Yeah? In 1860s, profile rose higher when he delivered another arousing speech at New York um, City Cooper Union. That may Republicans choose him as their candidate for president passing over powerful contenders. So the bottom line is... Abraham Lincoln, after years of tension, the election, he became, he was inaugurated and he succeeded to the presidency and basically he abolished, he helped to abolish slavery. History tells us that the war years were very difficult for him and his family because his young son died from typhoid fever in 1862. Now, Lincoln taught himself law. How lucky is that? I had to study almost six years at university to get my law degree. This man just come and teach himself law. And the bar examination in 1836, he passed with flying colors. And the bottom line is, well, he got married and went on to have four children, but only one made it to adulthood. Three died along the way. And he won the election, also representative and... He was just progressing, going from strength to strength until he called for a violation of the most basic tenets of the Declaration of Independence. So that's why I admire that particular man. Now, there's another woman who, who, who I really admire. Her name is Angela Davis, and she delivered a speech at the Embassy Auditorium in 1972. Basically, she was an activist, an international symbol of black revolution in the early 1970s. And she was organizing an event of three black prisoners accused of murder. And she herself wound up behind bars, imagine that. Charged with criminal conspiracy, kidnapping and first degree murder. A massive worldwide movement formed to free her from jail and she was eventually cleared of all the charges. But this woman first made national news in 1969 after graduating from university with high honors and a deep interest in Marxism. On that occasion, Ronald Reagan, California's Republican governor, tried to get her fired from her teaching job at the University of California. How bad is that? Well... According to history, on June 19, 1970, Reagan issued a memorandum declaring that Miss Davis will no longer be a part of the, the university staff. And so he argued that co communists were an endangerment to this wonderful system of government. While fighting for a job, Davis was also active in several militant black organizations, including the Black Panther, which we hear about a lot the Black Panther political party, which became the Los Angeles chapter of the NSCC. Now, on August 7, 1970, a young man by the name of Jonathan smuggled guns into a county courthouse in America and handed them to several prisoners and took five of them hostage. When this young man tried to escape with the group, guards opened fire. Four people were killed, including 
the young man, Jonathan, and the presiding judge, who was white. The FBI learned that the guns were registered to Angela Davis, and she maintained that this young man had taken the guns without her knowledge, but a warrant was still issued for her arrest, and she went into hiding. But August 18, the subsequent month, President Hoover put her on the FBI 10 most wanted list. Hmm. Typical. Um, they dubbing it, they called her in that newspaper report. They said she was armed and dangerous. The FBI caught her two months later in New York and she was extradited to California. Well, as, as, as history tells us that she, a massive worldwide movement formed, was formed to free her from jail and she was eventually cleared of all those charges. So that is good. But this experience solidified her already deep determination to fight for radical changes in America. So people have been fighting. Black history is all about the struggle and the oppression and fighting against oppression and trying to trying to make changes, trying to create a better world, a better society. So in my experience, black history is the ideal way to understand the issue of race in our society today. You see, in retrospect, the value of pursuing black history studies has helped me to gain knowledge of the past and present situation of what actually took place over those centuries. You know, so... I observe black history for the simple reason that I need to understand what uh, what was happening during my life, well, before I came along, during my parents' lifetime. And these three individuals that I've seen out today, is, I called, I'm, I'm attracted to them because of their efforts and what they contributed to society as a whole. Obviously, Angela Davis is still amongst us, but Louise Bennett, she died. When did she die? I think it was 1975. When did she die? Oh, Lord. Yeah, anyway, Louise Bennett is no longer with us. And um, this is what what has occurred, actually taking place, Black History, you know. The month of February, they celebrate it in America and throughout history, including the civil rights movement and their artistic, cultural, and political achievement. Black History is a story, really. It began in 1915, and it, it's really carrying on, you know. So Black History doesn't mean black people's history it's basically mean a bleak time a dark time a dark time in history where people are undergoing you know oppression and stuff like that so i'll speak more about um the languages that originated from the black country and the distinction between wolverhampton walsall birmingham and Dudley in my next speech. So keep subscribing, keep watching, and thanks for your time. Keep telling your friend about this channel because it's very informative and you can always learn something as well. Take care. Good night. Bye-bye.